Well, we teased it in between episodes and there's some big changes on the horizon. <laughs> What's on guys, Jay Hoyt back with you today. Welcome back to episode number 25 of our franchise mode with the buff with the who? What's their name? Yeah, welcome to back to the franchise mode. We are introducing today our brand new relocated franchise, the Baltimore Bulls. Yes, we changed it up. First time ever that I have done this, and I just wanted to see what it would take, right? And we end up doing it, right? We moved from Baltimore. We are now the Baltimore Bulls. Obviously, nothing else has really changed, and the arena and everything, I didn't really put too much time into because we don't really have much time left in this uh, franchise mode. Uh, but we're going to try this out. See if this helps anything. See if it changes anything. See if it changes up the simulation a little bit. Uh, but we are entering into the off season, right? If you remember last episode, you know, things didn't go how we wanted, right? We, um, yeah, things just... Yeah, just not a, not a good season. But either way, we are here. We fired all of our coaches because, you know, why not? What, what else is there to do? Uh, but let's get right into the draft, though, right? So we have the... Uh, we have what a second a third uh, yeah a second a third a fourth and a sixth. so we don't really have a lot of draft picks this year and I don't really anticipate anything coming out from the draft if I do uh, you will see it if not then I will see you right in the resign stage we're not messing around today all right we are into the resign stage we actually have a couple players that we're going to need to resign so that is one of our big things this year we do have 23 and a half million dollars and when we kind of look at it right the guys that are expiring we did trade for jj paterka again uh just bring back an old face we got him relatively cheap uh he was a player that the other team wanted to get rid of and honestly his trade value was not very much so why not so whether we're going to re-sign him or not well i guess we'll have to find out but um we're going to focus on the rest of our team first because we didn't really get uh give up much to get him uh so if he ends up walking i'm not really too worried about it uh but savoy kulik uh parks pashi novikov all these guys we need to make sure we bring back along with in goal right we have Daigle. his actually overall dropped tremendously uh so he was a 90 overall now he's an 87 you know i'm gonna offer him a qualifying offer but there is no way that i'm offering him any more than his current contract i'm gonna try to reset hummel just to kind of see if i can get you know two good goalies under contract for the cost of one if that makes sense and then uh, we'll try to get all these guys under contract as well of course you know we're gonna have to wait and see who actually resigns them all right so like i said we're gonna be changing up some stuff at the top doing stuff that i don't normally do during one of my franchise mode uh series and that's kind of getting a guy with significant term, right? Unless I know they're kind of like a superstar or know that I'm going to want to sign them to an extension right away. I usually don't do this. But also another one is to kind of load my center depth, which if you look at our center depth this uh, past year, right? You had Thompson, you had Savoy, you had Cousins. I mean, we had a few younger guys that could easily have come up and, uh, you know, played for us. But this one, my plan is, so we're going to be sending Batherson over to the Dallas Stars in exchange for, uh, Kot, I can never say his name, Kot Kanemi. You guys know who I'm talking about. This guy, right here, right? This, 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 it's this guy. We all know who he is, right? Right there. This guy. I'm not going to try to say his name again. Um, either way, he's got great stats across the board. Uh, he's like their sixth centerman. Uh, on that roster and they don't really have wingers so kind of helps us both out we do decrease uh, in salary just a little bit which helps us out for everything else uh, plus it gives us another playmaker which is something I've been looking for is trying to replace Batherson with a more playmaking style um, you know player not that Batherson's been doing bad but 
just to kind of switch it up on the forward side, right? Our forwards have kind of been together for a while. Maybe we're just getting a little bit complacent. But either way, I'm going to try this one for one and hope that works. Uh, of course, it doesn't. And we should honestly just be able to get rid of like a, a seventh here and call it good. Nope, you want a little bit more. All right. A fourth and a seventh does the trick. So Batherson, fourth and a seventh for uh, the other player. Yeah, I don't know why I tried to uh, get a player. I can't even try to pronounce his name. Uh, but either way, let's continue on and uh, get on with the rest of our offseason. Well, here we are at the start of the preseason. I didn't bring you into the absolute chaos that was, you know, re-signing players, free agency, trying to match everyone's demands, and trying to build a team for this year. So um, this is how it's going to start. Um, we did uh, acquire a few uh, new players uh, one of which uh, we did not re-sign, and that is going to be Cooley, right? He was our second line left wing. Um, he's been with us ever since the start. You know, we had lots of big plans for him this year, right? He was going to be kind of that second line, you know, scoring threat. He wanted to sign elsewhere, right? We offered him a more than fair offer, in my opinion. We had... Uh, he wanted like a little bit above $7 million for like four years. We offered him 7.5 in free agency after he didn't re-sign uh, during the re-sign stage. Didn't want 7.5 apparently. Um, I'm not sure of the team, but whatever the team offered him like 7.8 or something at four years, he decided to go with that. So uh, him and uh, Savoy walked in free agency as well. We were able to reacquire him um, one year at 10.5 million which was very surprising because after he didn't want to re-sign with us during the re-sign stage, we were offering him, you know, I think it was like even a seven or eight year deal worth like nine and a half million dollars. I really didn't want to go up to 10 um, at all, but it just kind of was like either you spend that much or you don't get him. So we kind of had to do that uh, as well as Jack Quinn's returning from last year. Um, and then some newer faces, right? Uh, this This guy. Yesperi, we'll just go with that. We'll just go. With, we'll just go with his first name. Yesperi uh, is on our second line along with a newer uh, killer, Yamamoto. Um, so we actually picked up him for very cheap, right? One year, one million dollars, eighty-two overall. Just as a depth piece, more than anything, I guess we, you know, with losing, you know, a couple of players in free agency and Novakov, by the way, that one of our other players uh, is still an RFA. He still has not signed yet along with Gabriel Diagle, our goalie. Um, so those guys should be signing hopefully very soon, but, you know, before the season starts. Uh, so those guys can get going. Um, a pair of new wingers here on the third line, uh, Kirill Marchenko, as well as uh, a familiar favorite to us, uh, Dominic Kubelik um, is our left wing on the third line. Um, and then we have up a couple of young players as well, Christoph Hulse, as well as Travis Galchenyuk. Uh, we have Richie returning on the fourth line, as well as our more recent uh, draft pick, Ernesto Ford. Uh, so he'll be trying out on the uh, fourth line down there, and we'll see how these guys do and rotate them all through all the lines and try to get some you know line combinations going. Uh, on defense, obviously, we are mostly the same, but uh, we had to get rid of uh, both of our third line right defensemen because they both wanted like $3 million dollars each and um yeah we're just not doing that uh so we had to release both of them uh we did re-sign pesci so he uh will be back with us obviously darlene's still here and we're gonna have lots of new faces around them so we have two kind of open spots and uh those two guys will i guess be the uh the winners of uh of the preseason battle so we have um i gotta stop getting people's names that i just don't understand or how to pronounce their name at all uh, but Luca here, as well as Mayorov, Conroy, as well as Havlid, all looking for spots this year. So we're going to test those guys out. We got Hummel back. We were able to re-sign him, as well as Montembo will be our, I guess, starting uh, preseason backup goalie, as well as we have Thompson, Cousins, and we did sign Dylan Coughlin, or Coughlin, I don't really know how to pronounce it, but former Vegas uh, player, but fits in all of our lines really well. So he will be there. I'm not saying he's a lock for opening day, um, but he fits all our lines. So I'm not really sure how much that matters, but uh, you know that's what we're gonna seek to do here. So 
Um, yeah, like I said, we got a couple of guys still RFAs, not signed. We lost a couple of players in this whole thing. We made some moves. And now it's time to see how this all uh, goes for, uh, you know, goes forward towards preseason, towards the start of the regular season. And uh, this new look roster now in Baltimore, the Baltimore Bulls. We'll be making our debut, hopefully with a solid team around us, and hopefully do something we haven't done in a while and make it to the Stanley Cup final. But that's going to do it for today's video. If you did enjoy, hit the like button down below if you haven't yet. Or if you're brand new here, make sure to subscribe. And as always, guys, we'll see you in the next one.